Okay, I wanted to just talk over some of the concepts in this resource constraint and product mix. Um, and, and product mix decisions means that, let's say, I've got two different products. In this case, we had shirts and jeans to sell, but each one uses up a different amount of corporate resources. Okay, there's a constraint on getting it through the pipe. Okay, so um, for product mix, questions to be asked are what constraint stops us from making all the units that we can sell? Okay, you, let's say you just don't have enough of, of, of a certain type of machine. And which products offer the highest contribution margin per unit of the constraint? Okay, would emphasizing one product over another affect the fixed costs or sales of other products? So this last piece is really a strategy question again. And what we're going to be concerned with here is who offers the highest contribution margin per unit of the constraint? So if if there is no constraint, then we can produce the product with the highest co contribution margin per unit. Okay, if there's a constraint, you want to emphasize the product with the highest contribution margin per unit of constraint. Okay, so let's take a look at the example that they have here. This is a, um, a company that uses the same machines to produce both jeans and shirts. Okay, and, the, and besides that, the sh machines have only 2,000 hours of capacity per period. Okay, in this case, machine hours is a production constraint. So I've got, I've got, I can sell jeans for $30 or $60 and, and shirts for $30. My variable expenses are $12 and $48. So my contribution margin, $30 minus $12 is $18. $60 minus $48 is $12. Okay, contribution margin ratio. 18 divided by 30, 60%. Um, 12 divided by 60, 20%. So you can see the contribution margin ratio is much higher on the, on the shirts. Okay, they're making more money. Now, the number of jeans produced per hour, we can produce, there are jeans that should be products, right? Um, I'm going to say products. Products produced per hour, 10 shirts per hour and 20 jeans per hour okay so we can produce double the amount of jeans um, the company will incur the same fixed costs either way so fixed costs are irrelevant so assuming that union bay can sell all of the product it produces which one should they emphasize okay and you can see i mean the contribution margin is much higher with with shirts but we can only do 10 an hour okay so let's see how we do this. I'm going to take my contribution margin per unit, 18 for shirts and 12 for jeans, and multiply it by the number of units produced per hour. 10 shirts per hour, 20 pairs of jeans per hour. So my contribution margin per machine hour is $180 for shirts, $240 for jeans. Okay, multiply by the available capacity, 2,000 hours. So this is a contribution margin per machine hour times 2,000 hours gives us a contribution margin at full capacity, 360,000 for shirts, 480,000 for jeans. Okay, so what you would do is you would produce all the jeans that you could, and then um, if you've got if you've got extra time left, then produce the shirts. Okay, but you'd be making a lot more money on on jeans. So when product when pro product mix when demand is limited. So in this case, let's say that Union Bay can, Bay can only sell 30,000 pairs of jeans. I don't know why they're pairs, huh? If Union Bay makes only 30,000 jeans, it will use only 1,500 machine hours. Okay? That's all they would have. That would be 30,000 jeans at, or th yeah, 30,000 jeans at 20 jeans per machine hour. Okay? 20 per machine hour that gives me 1500 machine hours that leaves and we've got 2000 total so that leaves 500 machine hours available for making shirts so then the contribution margin could be revised like this I would have how many do I have here contribution margin per machine hour is 180 and 240 okay we're going to produce 1500 use 1500 hours for jeans and 500 for shirts 
So the contribution margin at full capacity is um, 360000 for the jeans, 90000 for the shirts. Okay. And because of the change in product mix, the total contribution margin will decrease from 480000 to 450 Okay, a $30,000 um, decline. Union Bay had to give up $60 of contribution margin per machine hour. Okay. Um, and the 500 hours it's been producing shirts rather than jeans. Okay, they didn't have any choice. At least they could sell product and keep the keep the uh, plant rolling. Okay, so the biggest one, the biggest uh, chart that you want to pay attention to is, is this analysis right here. Contribution margin per unit times the number of constrained units that it'll take gives us our contribution margin per machine hour. And this is your decision point right there. Okay.